what did you do colleen hoover you were going so well hello welcome or welcome back my name is lila and today i am sharing the only books i have ever given five stars and while my opinion might be subjective i can guarantee you that the books that i'm about to recommend are going to change your life if you haven't read them already here is the earring check of the day they are emerald knockoffs because i love green okay let's get started oh and i'm also going to be throwing in some books that that book talk might have convinced you were five stars but turns out they might not have actually been okay drum roll please i know you've seen this on the internet as well although not to the extent that you've seen it ends with us because that whew, took over book talk like crazy this is the only book i can confidently claim has completely transformed my life i was about 80 pages in when i realized like this is the one for context i don't buy books i know a lot of you like to read fiction sci-fi graphic novels and not really self-help books and i totally understand that when i was younger the only thing i ever read was fiction but you have to read this the first thing you'll notice about this book is it is so simple to read i'll show you a page like look at this I don't know if you can see it doesn't hurt your eyes when you open the page you won't find it difficult to read like i don't like reading very much but even i was able to easily get through it now beware this is not a storybook this is supposed to give you realistic advice for changing your life for the better another thing i absolutely love about this book is the cover take a look at it i love how this looks on literally everything in my house and maybe that's another reason why i got so many sales because people just cannot get enough of this simplistic minimalistic style it's made up of these little atoms to symbolize the atomic habits which is something he talks about in the book another part i really loved about this book and this is also in rich dad poor dad by the way the author includes a chapter summary after every single chapter and the chapters themselves are not super long so again this is so easy to read and the chapter summary really helps it's not too long what i noticed with rich dad poor dad was the chapter summary would be like five pages and it was just five pages of him repeating everything he wrote in the other pages so it just felt very repetitive another thing was okay i know i told you that this book is not meant for entertainment but what i noticed is that i was super intrigued when i was reading this because the author starts every chapter with a true story or true facts or something and i haven't just learned about building habits i've learned different things about how ice cream is made and and certain things i didn't know about chess and like all the even things that i don't enjoy normally i've been learning so much about them too so super great book it has helped me develop habits this book has helped me fix my posting schedule on instagram if you follow my instagram you'll know that i've been posting consistently every single day which i wasn't able to do for the past five years but after reading this book <laughs> i just got everything i needed to to finally be able to do that and then i've also started working out i'm still working on that habit but it's getting better what else i've been hydrating when you read it you just get this really s big surge of motivation and it just there's something about reading a self-help book especially one written this way that makes you feel so confident afterwards i feel like when you're working on your body and your mind it's like when you read books and when you work out and when you do things that are that are good for you it makes you feel really confident so this is another thing confidence booster you work on yourself these next six months you'll see like a huge shift in your confidence in your life in your happiness so totally totally recommend this this is a solid five um just one thing keep this in mind the book itself is not going to change you right it's what you do with the knowledge that the book provides you with if you choose to apply some of these tips and tricks to your life then it will work otherwise it might just seem like you're reading something that you already know and this is boring and a regurgitation of everything you see on the internet so please keep in mind this is for people who like actually want to do something to change their lives to change the quality of their lives which i think you guys are okay i'm gonna recline my seat a little bit does i have enough all right so we have it ends with us 
the amount of times I have heard about this book is absolutely insane. This book is so popular on Book Talk. First off, I want to say the cover is so beautiful. So here's the cover. It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. And I thought it was one of the prettiest books out there um, because some of the covers in the libraries are really mundane and not artsy at all. But this was, this was gorgeous. So graphic design, 10 out of 10. But it just wasn't it just didn't give Ugh. look don't get me wrong i i think this book is good but it's not great just based off of the books that i've read i'm no avid reader but i feel like there are books out there that are probably more deserving and worthy of this nomination and of this title as America's best-selling author book like anybody even people who don't read will be able to tell you that they have seen this book because it's not popular and I just I don't know if it deserves that much attention okay if I give you a spoiler I will let you know in advance and then you can skip it okay so let's talk about the writing and then the characters so the writing itself is very very simplistic and that's one of the first things you notice i kind of prefer things that are a little more complex i like reading because it helps increase critical thinking and i wanted to expand my vocabulary so including the author's notes part i think this book is like around 350 pages which it's kind of a lot for for what she had to say i feel like i wasted my time a little bit you know oh man when i first picked up the book i thought okay well-known well-renowned author well-known book i was expecting it to just be a little more what's the word florid don't get me wrong she's a beautiful writer and that's why i'm a little bit annoyed because i think she's definitely capable of writing a book a little bit more complex than this but it's it's very simplistic like a little child could read this book and understand it except they should not because it's definitely it contains a lot of mature content in it too and that was my second pet peeve um i think she went overboard it's just it's way way too much okay number two characters and their characterizations so something you'll notice about this book is it has a lot of great quotes i think some of the the dialogue between characters is amazing she addresses a lot of issues like domestic abuse and violence generational trauma and those are great and they're really complex topics and i think that maybe that's another reason why she chose to make it very simple because she was writing about something so complex and intricate like all of these feelings um of of lily and like her messed up relationship with ryle it's obviously going to screw with someone's head so in order to convey that through her writing maybe she had to use simple words right so that the rest of us could get it easily so the characters they just they didn't stick with me you know compared to other books um after i read a book i'm like oh damn and then I'm thinking about the character and imagining different versions, different endings for them or, or something. I kind of forgot about the characters pretty much immediately after I read the book. Yeah, the characters just don't really stick with you because they don't grow, most of them. I mean, Lily, Lily is kind of the only one who has a little bit of growth. And then you see Ryle obviously uh, has the opposite effect. He doesn't grow. He like gets worse <laughs> in a lot of places um atlas is is the good guy but he's very stationary i think atlas stuck with me a little bit but whew, it was just it was a little bit shallow i i feel like she could have given the characters a little bit more depth atlas especially i feel like he's such a um unique character and what with his story um she can definitely expand on that and i've heard that that's what she's doing with in the second book and people have liked the second book more which i have with me by the way here's the second book it's called it starts with us and it's about atlas and lily and their relationship i haven't read this book yet fully i read a couple pages and then i stopped see that's the thing like i can't bring myself to to read this after i read this because i don't want to waste my time one thing i will say though i was extremely hooked like i read this as a as a pdf version so i read the ebook and i don't do ebooks like ebooks and me we don't go together at all. I hate ebooks. But despite that, 
I was able to get through with this book in literally every class, after school, in the car, you name it. Like, I was reading this book all day long and I finished it in, I believe, a couple days. That's why I think she's a really good writer. The story was just not as I expected it. Maybe it's because people hyped it up a lot and so my expectations were, like, really high, right? So, overall, I would rate this book a four because... It's good, it's not great, and I'm definitely going to reconsider before I, like, look at book talk for anything again, because, hmm, <laughs> book talk? I don't, I don't get it. Last thing, the ending. This is a spoiler, so <laughs> you should probably leave. Whew. The ending. What did you do? Colleen Hoover, you were going so well. I liked the book overall up until the end, and that's when I was like, this is not okay. Everything she did... Everything she wrote in the book, the scenes with Ryle and Lily, the abuse and, and all of that, it's just, it's so realistic. And I love that because it makes a lot of sense, right? But then we see, then she gets back with Atlas at the same time. Like, the book hasn't even finished, you know? If, if you're going to call this book, it ends with us. And... It's supposed to be heartbreaking. I, I don't know. It just, to make it more realistic, you know, she should have just, like, this doesn't happen in real life. You don't just magically go back to your old childhood lover and enjoy life again and everything's all sunshine and rainbows. Like, that doesn't happen. And you, like, she conveyed that really well and up until the ending. And then all of a sudden, Lily and Atlas find each other somehow. It's not realistic. And I feel like that ending really, really threw us off. Like, I, you know, this type of a book, I don't think it deserves a happy ending. It shouldn't have a happy ending. She could have, like, done a second book. She could have done the same second book and, and, like, shown how Atlas and Lily got together afterwards. But in this book, I think she really should have left that part out and it should have just ended with Lily and Ryle separating. This is another spoiler, so please watch out. The book was very predictable. From the moment she met Ryle to what she started telling him, like, she was telling him all about her dad and like he she's he's the only person she revealed this to and then of course ryle's tantrums in the beginning like it was i don't know it was just super predictable and you like you already know what's gonna happen at the end like based off of the title and the the beginning of the book do i recommend you read it i don't know it depends you can there is some explicit stuff but if you're older i guess you can read it yeah okay moving on next book is the cruel prince I know you've seen this book somewhere, probably, most likely, yeah, maybe, no? People recommended it, friends recommended it, that's how I came to know about it in the first place. So far, I had only heard good things about this book. Just like it ends with us, you know, up until I actually read it ends with us. Most of the feedback I had gotten on it was that it was really good. And then I read it and then I was like, huh, interesting. Some of you might not agree with me, but it was just kind of off for me. Like, hmm. Okay, so I've read books about the Fae before, A Court of Thorns and Roses being one. I loved those books, and those are also definitely a five, but they're not included in this because I don't have the, the hardcover or the physical copies of the books, and I kind of need that when I'm talking about it. I don't know why, I just I like having the hardcover copies. I read those back in grade six, and when I read this, I was getting a very similar vibe throughout the book, which was great. I love that, but it's also a little bit weird because I read those Bay books in grade six, and now I'm in grade 12, so obviously I've grown, I've changed, and my reading taste has also kind of evolved, and I thought it was okay. So I'm gonna give this book a four out of five. And the reason why I'm including it in this video is because most people have rated it as a five. Like seriously, I was checking this book out at the library and several people stopped me to tell me that this is so good. And I was like, really? Whoa, thanks. I'm so glad I'm reading this. And it was like, I don't have that many complaints. Overall, it was okay. Maybe I'm being a little bit too nitpicky. This book could be a five. I've heard that the second and third books are really good. I haven't read them yet. And people told me that the series only gets better, that the first book is a little bit boring, but the rest of them are really, really good. So I'm definitely considering reading the other two when I have time as an individual book. Yeah, I'd give it a four. I was hooked for a while until the end. What is his name again? 
Carden. Oh, spoiler alert. Three, two, one. The betrayal by Locke was a little bit predictable, but I loved it. It was it was a good twist in the book. And uh Carden. Yes, Carden. So I don't know, guys, but maybe it's just how characters in female fiction are written. It was definitely giving Wattpad. <laughs> Wattpad fan fiction. That's what Jude and Cardin's relationship was giving to me. I feel like it's just so unrealistic the way that these men are. Not that he's a man, he's a fairy. Is that how you say it? How do you say it? Fairy or fairy? I don't know. Like, I get it's nonfiction, it's, uh, it's fiction. It's not supposed to be real, but like, come on, man. So cold here. <sighs> okay. So I have about. Oh my gosh, how many books did I bring? Wait, one, two. The next book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I have the small pocket version, which is so cute, and I'm able to take it anywhere with me. This book will also change your life, and this is the only other self help book I will recommend to you because it's kind of the only other self help book I've read. This is also a solid five. First of all, I think financial literacy is something that is so neglected by our school system. I don't know about you, but I personally don't feel like I've gotten a financial education at all from school from home like from any place so far it's always been chemistry math biology never like things that you actually will end up using in your life like if you want to make a standardized school system why not teach people some of the most basic things that they need to know like how to pay taxes or what an index fund is and what's investing and how do you do it and why should you do it aren't you supposed to start investing as soon as possible i don't know why schools don't teach this stuff you will never see this book in schools you will never see it being taught and this makes me so sad because it is jam-packed with knowledge that is going to help you so much i think the biggest thing this book did for me was change my perspective on money i don't view money the same way anymore and i definitely don't view the employer system the same way either don't get me wrong if i had a job right now i wouldn't immediately quit it because of this book i'm not telling you to read this book so you can quit your job because that's not realistic but i do think it does nudge you in the right direction i think like most of you i've grown up in a system where college has always been the top priority and it still is for me i still want to go to college in my life but i don't see it as something thing that you have to do you don't have to go to college to have a really good life and i think now more than ever this is so possible <laughs> best point it brings up is if you want to make money then going to college would actually not be the most beneficial thing to do but again it really depends on the pathway you want to take for some people college might sound like a great idea for some degrees for example for medicine like you you need to go to college right it's unavoidable and it's better for you to go to college but then for other things i would say like especially in the business world today there are so many opportunities provided online that you don't really need to go to college for he also talks about something called the rat race and getting stuck in it and the rat race is basically the system that everybody is put into where we grow up thinking that we have to go to college and then we have to get a good job and that's how we're going to be financially free but the reality is that is anything but i think this book is just so important for personal finance and and teaching people the basics of financial literacy overall a solid five i strongly recommend you read this book fun fact when i went to i got this book from indigo and so i was there in the bookstore and bookstore vibes are absolutely incredible as you know and there was this little kid i don't remember how old he was he could have been 11 12 and he came up to me and he told me that it was a really good book and i'm just like damn you're 12 years old or supposedly and you're reading this book already like, that's crazy you'll see so many people online um the self-made millionaires which is kind of sketchy i know but at the same time some of them are actually doing really well and are quite successful financially and a lot of them will bring up this book first of all if you're interested in business in finance this is going to be super helpful for you but also in general it doesn't matter if you're a middle school high school college student or not a student at all no matter who you are you should be reading this book one con of this book and i mentioned this before was the chapter summaries they're really long they're like 
five pages each and some of that was a little bit repetitive i think he definitely could have not done that because he kind of repeats everything he says in the chapter summary and i didn't like that so i kind of ended up skipping over it um but yeah everything else is really good up next okay, this is a book i read for school so <laughs> we're gonna debate the quality of this note but seriously this was a really really good book persepolis i absolutely fell in love with it because it's just one of the coolest things i've ever read there's a part one and a part two it's by marjane satrapi uh one interesting thing i don't think i've ever read a graphic novel before this like on my own outside of school and i'm not a fan of graphic novels but this was seriously so good this girl talks about her experiences in iran during war and then she also talks about migrating to austria and navigating through the, the cultural differences in both of those places it is so it makes you feel heard if you are an immigrant or the child of immigrant parents i think maybe i'm giving it a little bit more credit because i am a teen right now this one is a solid five as well can't come up with any criticism other than then maybe the author exaggerated some stuff a little bit it's an autobiograph uh, it's an autobiography so it's not a hundred percent real obviously it's not exactly what happens in marjane's life but it is based on a true story and i love that it's so much cooler when a book is based on a true story because you know like this stuff is applicable to people and it's it's relatable it's funny like really funny i was like crying screaming laughing reading this book super super good totally recommend this are you guys tired of me yet uh, okay, I think I forgot the other two books upstairs, so I'm gonna run and get them. I will be right back. Up last, we have The Handmaid's Tale. This is another book I had to read for school. I know, I know, you guys might think I'm cheating with this because these are books for school, but this one also turned out to be really, really good. The first thing this book reminded me of was Divergent because it just has that dystopian theme. I don't know if you guys know, but this book has been adapted into a show. It's really popular. <laughs> <laughs> the Kardashians threw a party theme based off of The Handmaid's Tale, which was controversial, but my point being that everybody knows about The Handmaid's Tale. I liked the concept. It's quite unique. I haven't seen that in a book in a while. Not that I've been <laughs> reading a lot. The literary reports that I have to write on this and the paper one that's coming up is not enjoyable. I heard Alexis Bedell is in it, and it's just, again, really famous, so totally recommend the book. I would give it a five. Yeah, there's not really much for me to say about this, because I know I have to write about it in school, so <laughs> I don't want to waste my energy right now. Hi again. My phone died, so I had to move to my bedroom. Um, I think we were just about done with the books. I did have another one, and this is a very short one, but I cannot seem to find the book anywhere. I have another one by the author. The author is Murakami. The book is called After Dark and it was just one of the coolest books on surrealism that I've ever read. I don't typically read surrealist fiction, so this was unique. It was like shifting between a dream world and a reality world. It takes place in Japan, Tokyo. So that was another interesting thing for me because I normally don't get that from books I read here, right? Most of my books have a lot of American or Canadian or European influences, but this one was all about Japan and the influence of colonial culture. The author just wrote it like really beautifully. I give it a five just because of how unique the book was. The final book I have is a book that I love and I also hate. I'm gonna keep it in this video because I did read it this year. I wrote my extended essay on this book. I know you're gonna say another school thing, but this was actually one of the biggest things that I did. Um, I used to fully hate this book and then I did my extended essay on it and then I realized like wow this is like truly a masterpiece of writing. Now the book is controversial because there is a lot of racist and derogatory language in it and that's why I while I love this book I love the writing of it and I love uh, other aspects of it I also hate this book <laughs> on another level like I've never hated a book so much but I still think that it is something that you should read so you can learn a lot from this book and some of the things it says about history it's called gone with the wind you might not be able to see that right now but this is my official copy. I lost the main cover, so please ignore that. So this book 
very racist in a lot of ways but the irony is that the author contradicts this racist message a lot it's it's not an easy read it took me so long to read this book i started it a couple years ago i think i was in grade 9 or grade 10 and i attempted to read this book and <laughs> it did not work out it's also a thousand pages long in case i forgot to tell you it's basically like carrying around the dictionary and you can impress your friends with that so hey I totally recommend because that's something I used to do. No, for real. Let me show you the copy that I do have. You're probably going to run away when you see this, but this was the OG copy. Yes, this is a library book. I didn't return it because I accidentally ripped the front cover, but we're, <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that right now. That That is irrelevant. This is the thing that I used to lug around all the time. So it's definitely a complex read. It reminds me of Game of Thrones. It's not it's not related to Game of Thrones and in any way, but just like the length of the book and the the words and the vocabulary and everything. It is complex. So if you want to challenge yourself, I'd recommend you read this book. I unfortunately can't give this book a number. Like I have no clue. I just I can't. Any other book you ask me, even if it's controversial, I can let you know. But this is the one book I have I have no answer for it. I can just tell you that I love it and I also hate it. Okay, that is all for this video. Thank you for sticking along if you made it until the end somehow. Wow, your attention span is better than the vast majority of the world these days who are addicted to TikTok. Let me know what you want to see next. I am doing a challenge. I am going to attempt to read 15 books in 30 days in 2023 one book every other day probably might not do it right away because i have a lot going on in january but eventually yes i will and i'm also doing a running challenge running for 30 days straight so stay tuned for that and please let me know what challenge ideas you would like to see i did a uh, waking up at 5 a.m which i will leave down below maybe don't trust book talk take everything with a grain of salt and stay tuned for the next video